Okay, so circuit versus packet switching. So we talked about what a packet is. A packet is this fixed size unit of information. And when packets emerged on the scene uh, in the 60s and 70s, they were really revolutionary. It was very, very hard for the phone companies to wrap their head around this idea. And the reason is they had invested so much time and energy into building these circuit switch networks. Packet switching to them seemed like something that was never going to work. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But first, let me talk about the differences in the approach. Okay, so. And I'm going to use the example of a, a voice conversation uh, between two people over here um, and two people over here. So these people are talking to each other on the phone. And in the old phone networks, here's how this would work. When these guys would get in touch, the phone company would build a circuit. So there'd actually be a, 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 a wire. Now that wire you know, might have passed through a couple of machines on the way. But there was a connection. There was a circuit, a wire connecting, um, let's say this is Alice um, to, to Bob over here. Um, okay. And, and when uh, these two people wanted to talk to each other, let's say this is uh, Greg and me, um, the phone company would build a second circuit. And now, here's the problem. Let's say that these two circuits are the only circuits that we have at a particular place. So let's say we're making a call from the same uh, block on the same street. Um, and maybe the, these people also live next door to each other. So as soon as these two circuits are established, um, there's no additional capacity in the network until Alice hangs up with Bob or I hang up with Greg. That's the only way that we're going to create uh, more capacity. And the other problem with this approach is that while these guys are, are talking, there's a fixed amount of network resources that are devoted to their conversation the whole time. So even if Alice calls up Bob because she likes to do this because she thinks it's funny and she just sits there and doesn't say anything on the line because she's trying to creep him out a little bit, that circuit that the telephone company has established is sitting there the whole time. And it can't, I can't get rid of it until these guys actually hang up. If somebody else came along here, let's say this is Linda, and Linda wants to place a call, and there's only two wires running on this particular part of the network, Linda's just going to have to wait for one of us to get off the phone. Now, in contrast, how would this work on a packet switch network? So let's say we have the same two wires that are connecting, um, that are connecting these uh, two pairs of people. But what's going to happen on a, on a circuit switch, on a packet switch network, excuse me, is that Alice's conversation, Alice's voice data, is going to be broken up into lots of little packets. And we call, we'll call these Alice's packets. And some of those packets can travel along this wire, but some of them can also be sent along this wire. Greg's packets, Greg's voice transmission is, we're going to do the same thing. So this wire is also going to be carrying some of Greg's packets. And this wire is also going to be carrying some of Greg's packets. And as long as we can make sure that all of the voice data generated by Alice makes it to Bob, and make sure that all of the voice data generated by Greg makes it to me, uh, we're fine. And it turns out that this is actually a much more efficient way of using the network. When Alice isn't saying anything, I don't actually have to put any packets out there on the network and transmit nothing, those empty packets, over to Bob. I just leave, leave them alone. And Bob doesn't hear anything, but that's OK because Alice isn't saying anything. The ability to uh, packetize this type of communication is also really important when we start talking about bursty data, like when people use the internet. So when I imagine that Greg and Alice are, are using the internet to browse websites, that doesn't create a lot of continuous traffic like me talking does. That contains little bursts of traffic. So you go to a website and it generates a little burst of packets. Then you go to another website and it generates a little burst of packets. And by Moving to a packet switch network, I can actually add a lot of additional happy, of course, people over here, like Linda and Fred. Fred's a little unhappy, I guess. Um, but Linda and Fred, their, their packets can just be transmitted over these same wires as long as there's capacity. 
And this approach allows me to make the best use of all of the network resources I have because I don't have to reserve them for this entire conversation between Alice and Bob. Now I've used the example of voice data and on some level the telephone companies were the most resistant to moving over to using packets to transmit voice data. But what's interesting is that packets have won. Packets have emerged victorious from this battle between circuit and packet switching. When you place a phone call today, your voice data very quickly gets, gets converted into packets in the interior of the network, sent across the network using this approach, and then reassembled at the other side. So packet switching is essentially almost killed off circuit switching entirely when it comes to how we transmit data across computer networks, and certainly within the internet.